Get him going. I love what you've done with this place. To my van, the mess it was. <laughs> <laughs> and me lying and driving him down Interstate 5 South almost to Mexico because I don't want to tell him since he's staying at Oregon Grand Hotel, Horton Plaza's next door and he has to get his kids toys at the Disney store. That's all he has to do, get his kids toys. And his manager, Albanetta, <laughs> says, well, you pick him up. Sorry, Kenneth. So he says, well, you pick him up. I'll, I'll give you the truncated version. And uh, so I picked up John Prime, drove south, and John Prime goes, is the Disney store in Mexico? <laughs> and I go, we're almost there, John. Because I picked him up. I could have said, you can walk to it next door, but Google Maps wasn't out yet or anything. And I knew it was next door, but I wanted him in my van. <laughs> Just like that salesman wanted me in his van. <laughs> Call back. Okay, so anyways. Um... <laughs> so... John Bryan goes in, I lead him into the underground garage so he doesn't know him, I lead him in. And he goes, I gotta call my wife Fiona, because I can never remember what I got him. And so he gets on the phone to Fiona, and he looks at me and he goes, and they never forget. And he said it, it just looked right through my soul. And then he gets Fiona on the phone, he's talking to her to see what toys he needs to get his kids, and he can see the sign that says Horton Grand Hotel, and he looked at me with the fear of God in his eyes, like, I've been in this guy's van in Mexico. And he goes, in there my hotel. And he like freaked out, and then I go, they must have moved in. And he, even I believe my own bullshit, and then he got the choice, he goes, are you gonna take me back to my hotel? Or should I just walk so I don't end up in Mexico? And then I go, get in the van, John. <laughs> That's exactly how I said it to you. The van, get in the van. The exact way that guy's voice sounds when he goes, it puts the lotion in the basket. And so John Brown looks at me, gets in the van. Like this fucking guy gets back in my van after I've already abducted him. So now it's becoming a Stephen King novel where I'm gonna take him home to my room and chain him to the bed and hobble him and make him write me my own John Prime songs. And so, but I don't, I drive him across the street. And then he goes, are you coming to the show tonight? <laughs> the more I tell this, the worse his voice gets. I, I, he goes, are you, are you coming to the show tonight? <laughs> then I go, no, I don't have tickets. And he goes, now you do. And I go, cool, thank you, my name's Steve Pultz. And he goes, I know who you are. My manager warned me about you. <laughs> And right where you guys are sitting is where the tickets were, front row. And I walked out on stage and John Prine looked at me and goes, So I just want to say, God bless John Prine. God yeah. bless all of you. Yeah. I'll be out there. This is our encore. Sorry that you have to sit through that story, but it had to be done. <laughs> Thank you again to Kenneth Pattengill from Milk Carton Kids. Yeah. How can a love that'll last forever? 
Get left so far behind So what in the world has come over you? What in heaven's name have you done? You've broken the speed of the sound Broken the speed of the sound of loneliness You're out there running just to be on Try this, what in the world has come over you? What in the world has come over What in heaven's name have you done? What in heaven's name have you done? Do it right! <laughs> broken the speed of the sound of loneliness